In the last half hour, we've heard that a further 758 people who tested positive for coronavirus have died in hospital in England. There have also been a further 74 deaths in Scotland, 19 deaths in Wales and three in Northern Ireland. These figures come as number 10, says the Prime Minister, who's in intensive care for coronavirus at St Thomas's Hospital in London, has been stable overnight and remains in good spirits. The spokesman said that Boris Johnson is receiving standard oxygen treatment and is breathing without any other assistance. He has not required mechanical ventilation and does not have pneumonia. The Prime Minister was admitted to hospital on Sunday night after his symptoms worsened. The Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, has been asked to deputise for him. This morning, Michael Gove announced that he also is now self-isolating as a member of his family is displaying symptoms of the virus. And in the last half hour, it's emerged the Queen is among the Prime Minister's well-wishers, saying that her thoughts are with his family and that she wishes him a full and speedy recovery. Our first report is by our political correspondent, Nick Erdley. Westminster and the country wait. Across the Thames from the Houses of Parliament, the Prime Minister remains in intensive care, struggling to overcome coronavirus. Boris Johnson has shown persistent symptoms since testing positive 12 days ago. Alas, I still have uh, one of the symptoms, a minor symptom of, I, have a, I still have a temperature. And so These pictures from Friday were the last time we saw him from self-isolation in Downing Street, but his condition has got worse. He was taken into intensive care at 7 o'clock last night after his condition worsened during the day. Um, and uh, as, as we speak, the Prime Minister is in intensive care, being looked after by uh, his medical team, receiving the very, very best care from the team at St Thomas's. And, and our hopes and prayers are with him and with his family. This afternoon, Downing Street has said the Prime Minister remains stable and in good spirits overnight. He is receiving oxygen treatment, but otherwise breathing unassisted. His spokesman said that he hasn't required the use of a ventilator and hasn't been diagnosed with pneumonia. The Foreign Secretary has been asked to deputise for the Prime Minister. He's in very good hands, Dominic Rabb said this morning, arriving for the daily meeting with ministers and government advisers to discuss the coronavirus strategy. The Prime Minister's uh, designated uh, Dominic, the, the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Rabb, as First Secretary of State that means that uh, uh, Dominic takes on the responsibilities of, of chairing the various meetings that the Prime Minister would have chaired. But we're all working together to implement the plan that the Prime Minister set out. In order Shortly after this interview, Michael Gove confirmed he was self-isolating after a family member showed symptoms. This virus is impacting the very top of government at a time of unprecedented challenge. For now, normal political life is on hold. But people are clearly anxious. Um, I know the business of government will continue. I was in touch with the Foreign Secretary last night. And I want to say that the Labour Party will act in the national interest. And that's why I've offered to act constructively with the government and support them where that's the right thing to do and push them further where we need to do it. I want to send every good wish to him, to his fiance, and to his whole family. We are all willing you on, Boris. Get well soon. One of Mr Johnson's predecessors had this message. Uh, all of us are praying for Boris and thinking of him and praying and thinking of his family and hoping that he gets well soon and gets back to number 10, where I know he wants to be and where he, we all want him to be. Boris is a very tough, very resilient, very fit person. I know that from facing him on the tennis court, and I'm sure he'll come through this. Friends of the Prime Minister say he's a fighter. You know, he's a pretty fit guy, Boris. He may not look that fit. He's got a heavy frame. He played a lot of rugby at school. You know, he's a fairly big guy, but, you know, he plays tennis very well to a high standard. He runs regularly. And I think if anyone's got a chance of beating this, then Boris Johnson's got a chance of doing that. An unprecedented health emergency for the country, an unprecedented situation in government and an uncertain road ahead. Nick Early, BBC News, Westminster. As we heard, Downing Street says the Prime Minister has been receiving standard oxygen treatment in an intensive care unit at St Thomas's Hospital, but he hasn't required mechanical ventilation. An ICU ward provides treatment and close monitoring for patients who are too seriously ill to be cared for in other parts of the hospital. Here's our health correspondent, Richard Galpin. Intensive care units are where severely ill patients are brought their lives potentially at risk. The 
Prime Minister was taken into an intensive care unit like this one yesterday after his condition deteriorated. He was conscious, given oxygen via a mask, but not put on a mechanical ventilator, a more intrusive procedure. But most patients do need ventilation quite soon. So what's it like to be on a ventilator, which takes over the breathing process? To be able to cope with that breathing machine, one needs to be very heavily sedated and usually given a paralyzing agent, a bit like curare, that stops the muscles working so the breathing machine can do its work. The patients are often uh, nursed lying flat uh, in a rotation between lying flat on their tummy and on their backs in a roughly 16-hour cycle. The doctors and nurses working in these intensive care units are constantly checking their patients. In normal times, you might expect that your blood pressure, your heart rate, your breathing rate would be recorded probably once every few hours, perhaps slightly more frequently if they're quite unwell. In intensive care, we do it continuously, and there's a monitor by the nurse's station that can be monitored all the time, even when a nurse isn't at the bedside. So we can keep a much closer eye on people. Mr Johnson may also have a special needle into one of his arteries that allows us to take blood samples that can very accurately monitor his blood oxygen levels. Going through intensive care is, of course, a very difficult experience. Getting out of hospital is a huge relief. I came out last week uh, on Monday and uh, uh, I don't know, when I came out, I just felt I felt, I felt, I think just coming out of hospital just made me so much better as well because it was a lonely period whilst I was in there. I had, I had nobody really. And then to be around my family and uh, and to just uh, now I try to get out in the garden and uh, get fresh air and uh, I'm really doing so well now. Assuming Boris Johnson recovers and is discharged from hospital, how quickly would he be able to return to work? If this is a short-term thing and he responds well, just needs a little bit of oxygen and recovers over the coming few days, then he will probably be feeling regaining his strength over the next week to 10 days. Downing Street says Boris Johnson is not on a ventilator at the moment, but he is getting oxygen using a mask. Richard Galpin, BBC News. Well, we can speak now to Charlotte Gallagher, who's outside St Thomas's Hospital in central London, where the Prime Minister is, as you heard, receiving treatment. Charlotte, just bring us up to date. Boris Johnson remains in intensive care at St Thomas's Hospital, Rita. And we heard some positive news that he's remaining in a stable condition, he's in good spirits, and he's being given oxygen. But crucially, he's not on a ventilator. And that means he's breathing without mechanical assistance at the moment. Now, you might notice behind me the hospital looks a bit different to how it usually does. They've erected security hoarding around the building, police officers patrolling. They're at every entrance and exit checking people's passes because this is such a serious, unprecedented and dramatic situation. There's other people in there being treated for coronavirus in the intensive care unit. Obviously people very seriously unwell. Incredibly worrying for lots of people's relatives, including Boris Johnson's, his friends and family. They won't be able to visit him in hospital because the virus is just so infectious. We know that his partner, she's pregnant and she's isolating at home as well after showing symptoms herself. And then we hear that Michael Gove, he's isolating as well. So lots of people in government being affected by this virus. We've heard lots of well wishes from people around the country. Um, just recently, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Catherine and William, they sent their best wishes on Twitter to Boris Johnson and everyone who's been affected by coronavirus around the world, wishing them a speedy recovery. We also heard from an NHS doctor, Rita, who said one thing that we shouldn't forget is lots of people are recovering. It's not all bad news. Lots of people, they're getting the treatment they need and they're getting better. Thanks so much, Charlotte. That's Charlotte Gallagher there outside St Thomas's Hospital.